but it's going to tell you, yeah, British Columbia, Moldova, Czech Republic, Bulgaria, Australia, Ukraine, United States, Monterey, Sonoma, Mendocino, Colombia, Gorge. All of those grow great Gewürztraminer. But where do you go if you want to experience the essence of Gewürztraminer? What is up guys, I'm Julian, the French winemaking guy who makes wine videos here on YouTube. Yes, wine videos. So welcome back to another wine video. Even though we're not going to be talking directly about wine today, we are going to be talking about wine box. So last week I published a complete review of Wine Folly's original first book published in 2015, The Essential Guide to Wine. And today I'm going to be telling you about the Magnum Edition. So this was the more like the borrowed edition, I suppose. This is the Magnum Edition Master Guide to Wine as opposed to the essential guide to wine. So I'm going to be telling you what is, is in this book, what you should expect to find inside if you are going to buy it. I'm going to give you my genuine opinion on whether or not you should buy it or not. And I'm also going to be telling you whether you should buy this one for yourself or this one for yourself, or maybe as a gift, depending on who you are, depending on your level of wine knowledge, and obviously depending what I find, what we find together in this book. I also started last week a bit of a draw just to thank you for supporting my channel. So I bought these two books, those two copies, and I'm going to be giving them to you, sending them, shipping them personally to you. It's just those two copies, but one of those you can have for you if you enter the draw. So make sure to stay tuned to the end of this video where I will tell you how you can win uh, one of those two at the end of this video. So let's get right into Wine Folly's uh, Magnum Edition. First of all, you are going to be finding over the first about 70 pages the Wine Basics. It's going to be covering everything from what is wine, how you should handle wine, the serving temperature, how to store wine, how you should age wine, uh, these sort of things. It's also going to be going rather deep into how to taste wine, how to approach wine in terms of tasting it. You have your glass of wine in front of you. How do you go about evaluating the color? evaluating the smell, the appearance, the taste, etc, etc. Well, this book I uh, told you last week was rather light. There was about 30 pages on all those different aspects. You're getting 70 pages on this one. And those are 70 pages that are packed full of information. The design was already good here, but it's been refined one step further. I think Wine Folly that is famous for all of her fantastic infographics. She's added more and more and more and more infographics. So those 70 pages at the beginning, they also include much more around wine aromas, alcohol, the body, the tannins. So there's a lot more information. It goes into a lot more details into a wealth, a wealth of information. It's very digestible. So that first part is absolutely nailed. Cooking even goes as far as, you know, what you can do with cooking with wine. Uh, cooking with dry whites, nutty oxidized wine. So the sherries, the ports and all sort of things. So, I mean, that's a lot of information you're getting. So first part, definitely much superior to this one. You can read this book, those 70 pages with passion, beautiful, moving on. After those first 70 pages, what are you going to be finding? You are going to be finding from A to Z a list of all the grape varieties. Well, the main grape varieties, there's about 120 pages of this here. So I'm guessing it's around 80, 90 grape varieties. You are going to be getting essentially one page per grape variety. Some grape varieties have two pages. Uh, on those pages, from A to B, I think it goes from Agiorgitico, a Greek grape variety, all the way down to Zinfandel. So quite a few grape varieties. You are going to be finding a bit of a chat on uh, the body, the tannins, the acidity of each wine, the main uh, aromas that you are expected to find in that type of uh, varietal wine. And uh, you're going to be a bit of information on which type of wine glass you need to use. Is it a big red wine glass or smaller white wine glass? temperature of serving, how long you should decant it for, how much you're expected to buy or how much you should spend on it and how long you should sell it. So it goes really, really straight to the point, a key, key information about each varietal. Some 
important grape varieties such as the Cabernet Sauvignon have two pages. One of my big regrets uh, on this book compared to this one, uh, I was telling you last week that I love the aroma wheels that you can find in this book. Many of the grape varieties here, because they only have one page for them, don't have these complete aroma wheels with all the possible aromas that you may find in this wine. It's only summed up to five key expected aromas and that's a little bit uh, restrictive if you are a little bit deeper a little bit no more knowledgeable if you've gone already a little bit further into your wine knowledge this one one of the big pros that i found in this particular book one of the things that i love the most and it's been taken away it is it is present though for the most the main grape varieties such as Cabernet Sauvignon here so it will cover most of the wines that you will find at the supermarket um, but it's not going to go into the detail for the smaller the lesser known grape varieties which I regret another uh, regret that I have on those pages on this book so Winefall is essential guide for each grape variety was pretty superficial on every grape you had the key information go and watch what I said about this book key information it was very superficial but it was at least going straight to the point what i find in this edition i find it it goes a little bit deeper you get maybe a little bit more explanation uh, for those detailed reviews but it's a little bit more detailed but not detailed enough that it actually helps you understand the grape uh, all that much and i find that it's actually a little bit confusing when you read the page about cabernet sauvignon I'm going to read you briefly the intro to Cabernet Sauvignon, the world's most popular wine in a natural cross between Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc that originated in Bordeaux. And it doesn't even say France there, but anyway, everyone knows Bordeaux is in France. Wines are concentrated and age worthy. The rich flavor and high tanning content of Cabernet Sauvignon make it a perfect partner to rich grilled meats, peppery sauces and dishes and high flavor. So this, at this point, it doesn't even say where are the most popular the most famous you know Cabernet Sauvignon wines made or grown you are getting a bit of a chart on the different countries and regions that grow it but if you look at this chart you're getting quite a lot of mixed lots of stats or you know you can see every country that produces it and you can't really see the main areas if you look at where it is grown in France on that chart, it's going to be telling you that it's grown in Bordeaux, in Bergerac and in Languedoc-Roussillon. Obviously, Cabernet Sauvignon is grown in Bergerac, but Bergerac is rather obscure. I mean, I know about Bergerac because I'm French, but it's quite a small appellation, rather obscure. Not many people know about that. Obviously, Cabernet Sauvignon is grown in Languedoc-Roussillon, but it's not very good, generally speaking, in Cabernet Sauvignon. There are some rare exceptions. So it mixes Bordeaux, Bergerac and Languedoc-Roussillon, only talking about France. Well, obviously, Cabernet Sauvignon is Bordeaux in like you know, if you think Cabernet Sauvignon in the old world, well, it's obviously Bordeaux. And nowhere is it obvious on this page that Bordeaux is the area in the world where you want to look for some of the very best Cabernet Sauvignon. It even goes as far as listing a few countries. So Chile, Napa Valley, California and South Australia and giving you a bit of an explanation on those three region countries region slash countries talking about Cabernet Sauvignon in those countries so nothing about France which is quite staggering um, Chile yeah excellent Cabernet Sauvignons in Chile obviously Napa Valley but there's also fantastic other regions in the US and South Australia when it talks to South Australia it talks mainly of Coonawarra and mainly of South Australia Kunawara, fantastic Cabernet Sauvignons, those red irony soils produce ex ex fantastically good Cabernet Sauvignons in Australia, in South Australia, but some of the best Cabernet Sauvignons in Australia come out of Western Australia in Margaret River. So obviously this is kind of knowledge that you acquire with time. When you look at this, you're sort of thinking, okay, so South Africa, Italy, Argentina, China, Australia, Spain, Chile, United States and France grow some Cabernet Sauvignons. You got regions like Ma Ma Maipo, Kunawara, Castilla-La Mancha, Heibei, Xinjiang, Mendoza, San Juan, Veneto, Sicilia, Tuscany, Stellenbosch. All of these regions grow Cabernet Sauvignon. 
where do you start? Where do you start? Well, if you're starting with Cabernet Sauvignon, well, you should go Bordeaux, uh, left bank. You should obviously go California, Napa Valley, but you know, experience around Sonoma, Sonoma County as well, a bit on the on the central coast as well. Most definitely, if you want to experience Paso Robles, obviously. But then you do want to go a bit in Australia, and yeah, try a few Chileans. Uh, and yeah, maybe in Italy, Tuscany, yeah, I don't know, I wouldn't go there so much, just, you know, for the archetypical. Anyway, you get the point. Chenin, great, the aromas here are, are really, really good. On Chenin, you get some quince, yellow apple, pear, chamomile, and honey. That's just really, really great. Uh, another example, um, <coughs> a page on Gewürztraminer, so one single page on Gewürztraminer, treasured for its intense floral aromas, Gewürztraminer Grif has thrived for centuries in Europe. Wines are best enjoyed on their use when acidity is highest. Yeah, I guess I guess that's true. You get getting some late harvest and some aged Gewürztraminer that can be fantastic as well. But anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll say that it's fine. Again, you look at where it grows, that chart, and there's yeah, a bit more in France here, a bit more in other, a bit more in Italy. But it's going to tell you, yeah, British Columbia, Moldova, Czech Republic, Bulgaria, Australia, Ukraine, United States, Monterey, Sonoma, Mendocino, Colombia, Gorge. All of those grow great Gewürztraminer. But where do you go if you want to experience the essence of Gewürztraminer? California makes some great Gewürztraminer. Uh, British Columbia also, I'm sure there's some great ones in Australia and in New Zealand. But I would start with Alsace, right? I would, I mean, Alsace, maybe Germany, if you want the archetypical Gewürztraminer. Well, start with Alsace and nowhere is it going to tell you where to start here. So a little bit confusing. And one last example on this is a Zinfandel, a fruit forward yet bold red that's loved for its jammy fruit and smoky exotic spice notes. Originally from Croatia, Zinfandel is related to Croatian number one red, Plavik Malik. I think the Zinfandel description on this one talked about Primitivo, how Primitivo, the cousin of Zinfandel, is grown in the southern part of Italy. Of course, I'm sure they have demonstrated with DNA tastings that Zinfandel is actually more related to Plavic Mali than to Primitivo, but everyone, when you think about Zinfandel, where you think it's the same grape as Primitivo in Italy, you are much more likely to find a Primitivo wine on your wine shop shelves than a Plavic Malik. There's lots of Primitivos, fantastic Primitivos in Italy. It's not going to tell you anywhere here to go and look out for a Primitivo if you want, if you like Zinfandel, but you're looking for uh, an alternative. It's going to tell you also try, there's a bit of an also try section here, Plavic Mali, not easy to find. Grenache, yeah, Grenache, I guess, is another big, bold red wine, but it's quite dis distinct from Zinfandel. But anyway, Carignan, Castellau, and Frappato. Where is Primitivo? Anyway, so those are, again, very well made, just like they were here, but I find it tries to go a little bit deeper, but it results a little bit confusing. Maybe if you don't know much about wine, you're not going to notice those things, but if you do, those 120 pages here are not all that good. Last part of the book, what are you going to be finding? You are going to be finding wine regions with loads of wine maps. And uh, wine maps, a bit of descriptions of each country. Short description, but it was much shorter and much, much lighter on the, the previous book. It goes a little bit more into the detail. And what I love about the Magnum edition, for each country here, it is going to tell you which wines to explore. If you're going in Argentina, it's going to tell you, well, try wines from the Uca Valley, from Luján de Cuyo, and, you know, Patagonia Pinot Noir, some Tempranillo. So this is, this is, yeah, well done on this, Madeleine. This is great. It's a huge improvement on this one. So better maps, a bit more description, and more importantly, in each country, you are getting some of the key wines. There was a little bit of this, but it was extremely light. Now you're having some more detailed information. So as a conclusion, Wine Folly's Master Guide, all of the initial part, 70, first 70 pages are fantastic. I think while here I told you that you only had 30 pages, you could read them in half an hour, 45 minutes. This is a book that you can actually read, read 
before you're going to bed or you can read it one hour here one hour there just to read you can go through the book and read it just to increase your wine knowledge if you're curious about wine you can actually read this book it wasn't the case here so great improvement the design is much better you're getting much more content on this book as well but last week i said i would perhaps buy this book if only for those aroma charts and for those individual wine pages that you had that are quite succinct and brief but you get some key information and all the aromas in this middle part here i wouldn't buy this book for this at all if you want like i said last week if you want to just explore the world of wine go to your favorite wine shop buy a bottle of wine randomly or you know follow your wine shop expert uh, advice come back with a bottle of uh, Mencia from Spain for example and say okay I bought a bottle of wine from Spain what is it about you can have this book as a reference um, on your bookshelves and check it out and I said if you do this with each and every wine that you taste checking out the aroma wheel you will actually learn quite a lot by using this book all in all well depend what you want if you want a book to read and improve your wine knowledge have this reference book there's a lot more wine and food uh, pairing in here as well so if you want to read about wine and learn a little bit more get you started on the way on the road to learning more about wine this is a great wine book if you want more to have a wine that you can check out every once in a while and have on your bookshelf this is going to be a much much better book so this is going to last you a little bit longer as well because you can always get back to it for a reference well this one once you've read it um, in my humble opinion you'll be done with it so maybe you need both um, at the end of the day i think both of them are great books beginners books they don't go too very too deep i said this last week already which is fair enough as i said last week i love how madly pocket simplifies wines i love both those books and that's why i want to give them to you how do we go about entering the draw so i can pick one of you randomly to send uh, those two books to well leave me a comment down in the in the description of this video subscribe to the channel let, let me know in the comments that you subscribe to the channel and that you would like one of those books i will pick the comment the comments from last week's video and this week's video all of those and pick randomly two winners and i will sign those books with a little note and send those books directly to you so i hope this video was useful and i will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine au revoir bye bye santé cheers